Happy Friday. It is the 4th of July weekend, and I finally can get started on Stanley. I am so excited about this van build. I mean, my friends can tell you I've just been blabbering about Stanley. Anyway, I hope you follow along. It's going to be a whole series on building him out. What I do right, what I do wrong, and yeah, I'm very excited about this. So, let me give you a quick tour before we start. Everybody, here we go now there was a desk there if you remember from the original van tour that um, my my guys that mow my lawn they also um, take in scrap metal so they were very happy to get this um, now this here uh, you know I'm thinking I might do something cute with this I am taking suggestions I was thinking like doing, uh, maybe filling it in and, and putting like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, pin board, you know, to pin up stuff. Um, I was thinking that, but keeping this so a, I can keep this shut. So when I'm not in here and Austin's in here, she can't get up front and get at things she shouldn't get at. So, I am taking ideas. Let me know what I can do with this to make it cuter. Anyway, and I'm not in here, and Austin's in here. She can't get up front and get at things she shouldn't get at. So, what I'm going to be working on now is getting this out. Uh, because I actually sold it on Marketplace. Um... So they're going to be getting that this afternoon, so I have to get that out. As you can see, it's bolted to the wall, which actually, you know, is okay because I'm going to be bolting my frame. Okay, this proved to be a pain in the ass to get out. Like, seriously. You seen it in the van yesterday, and I did not film this coming out because... I had to go to my brother's, and as you can see, it's out now. But they, like, use these heavy-duty, long-shanked bolts with nuts on the end of them to hold that thing in. I don't know what kind of heavy parts they were carrying. I mean, that thing is not that sturdy. I don't know why they needed these heavy bolts to go in there but first we tried you know muscling them out that didn't work then we tried um a impact hammer that did nothing so then we tried a grinder but the grinder couldn't get up into the tight area because literally it was up next to that fender that wheel well so you couldn't get the grinder in there so, last but least, we torched those puppies out. So, sorry, no footage of that. Probably would have had to, like, bleep out a lot of stuff. <laughs> anyway, it is now out. So, um, this was an afternoon project. Finally, the desk gone. Parts been gone. Now, tomorrow, after I meet up some friends for a run... I'm going to cut, uh, well, I'm going to pop these uh, trim. As you can see, there's trim here and trim here. So I'm going to pop those out. I'm going to take a utility knife because I think this is going to just put some... Um, two by ones in here or furring strips and then 
glue some fabric on it. And like this side could be like cork board almost. And so I could just, you know, pin up some things where I'm going, where I've been. And that, hmm, like I said, I need some help. All right, let's exacto this rubber mat. All right, let's exacto this rubber mat. Okay, let's remove the rubber mat. Part, what, three, four now? Okay, you are seeing it as I am seeing it. Now, you're going to say, whoo, there's some rust. Actually, this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be because pulling up that mat I was feeling a lot of moisture on that mat underneath, which I don't know why they put that. That was like the dumbest thing ever. It's like, I mean, it's like they put that mat underneath the rubber mat. Like these guys that were using it was standing back here on their feet eight hours. I think it's like the dumbest thing ever. Anyway, because, folks, that is not insulation. That is just mat. That's like a mat that you would put under a carpeting. So, I am not surprised by what I see. Now, uh, it looks like they had, at one time, a pretty good chunk there. And so, they welded in another piece of steel. Which, if you don't take care of the problem, you know, it's just going to come back. And there's some JB Weld there. So what I think I'm going to do, uh, we'll get this cleaned out, get the rest of that yicky old mat that probably has, I don't know what in it. Um, the rest of that mat cut out of here, swept down, washed down, and then I'm going to take a grinder or I should say a sander, because I don't own a grinder, but I need, may need to buy one. Um, I'm going to grind this all down, see what I got then. Oh, before I forget, for those that are going to say, well, this is dented, it's sloped. Okay, this does not matter to me. Why does it not matter? The bed is going to be up and just above that or just yeah in front of the wheel wells which means the only actual floor I'm gonna have is in front of those wheel wells which that floor is fine level yeah a little rust there we'll take care of it but it's level so this here is what is going to be called this the garage. This is going to be storage. So glad I did not um, just ignore the problem. If you're building out something, of course you want it to last. And Stanley here is a 2008 Econo line. And there's going to be some rust. There just is going to be. 
This is Michigan. We put salt on our roads. And, yeah, there's going to be rust. Uh, thankfully, he was not, or he is not bad. So we're, we're going to tend to the problem. But if you're building out a van, note, do not leave. I mean, a lot of these cargo vans come with the same thing Stanley had, which was this rubber mat. Uh, the people here that had this previously, they just figured carpet double backing was going to work. And um, didn't even take into account that, you know, it's going to get wet. It's going to get yucky. I mean, I had to take a putty knife to, like, literally just get all of it out of here. Was not good. Um... So do not do that. And, you know, if you're building out a van, your subfloor, your floor, take some time. Put some money into it. Can I just say, I haven't had this much fun on a project or been this filthy on a project in a long time. I'm having so much fun. Woohoo! Hey everybody, uh, now that I have the back cleaned out, the yuckies ripped out of it, um, I ground down the rust um, in any paint. Now I'm going to apply this. This was recommended. I'll leave a link down there uh, of what it's called. Um, this is metal prep to um, oxidize the rust and hopefully slow her up a, a lot uh, before we prime and paint. So again, this is what I am using. I'll apply it and let it dry. All right. We have put the metal prep on. That stuff is no joke, boys and girls. Woo! So... It needs to dry. All right, so the floors have been prepped. How much nicer does that look already? I mean, seriously, already. Okay, so then while this was doing its thing and I washed it out, I washed the walls and the ceiling uh, just to get it washed, get the grime out of here. So now, next, uh, I have three holes to repair. That one. That one. And that one they put, I don't know, I thought it was JB Weld. It's not. It's some sort of funky foam. Um, I'll probably get that out of there. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I have no idea. Anyway, so I will show you. Uh, kind of taking a reverse course. Oh, yeah, to tell you. I had talked about using JB Weld. I'm not. We're gonna... Here's what we are using next. This is Hammer Tight, which is supposed to make rusty surfaces um, bondable, like for Bondo or JB Weld or whatever. They are to make the surface... Bondable. So this is where we're going next. Hey everybody, it's been a couple days, I know. Um, I had to do a trail race and then I spent a day recovering from it. So we're back at Stanley, uh, working on him before I have to actually go do my real job. Um, going to sand um, the other places that oxidized. So we're down to more metal on metal and the primer will stick. Okay, we have applied, sorry, I thought I was taping. I wasn't taping. Um, we have applied the hammer tight to the surfaces. So we're gonna let this go for a little while. Let it dry, but that's what it looks like. Yeah. 
All right. At what we've done so far. Let's do what we've done so far. We ground down the rust areas. We applied the metal prep. Uh, then we ground down again. And now, because the metal prep will oxidize the rust, so then you want to get it out again with the grinder. And now we have put on hammer tight, or hammer right, excuse me, I want to say hammer tight, which basically brings it down to that bare metal. All right, now that we have everything uh, hammer tight and ready, this is, my friend suggested this, um, this is fiberglass drywall tape uh, to give that bondo a backing, something to adhere to. So, we will see. But I thought that was a really good idea. We'll see how it works. This is the Bondo I used. You can get it at Home Depot. Uh, this stuff is no joke. I, I did not film while I was mixing this because you mix it, you put this stuff on. It says quickest setup available. They are not joking. Um, so anyway, this, this is what we did. Um, I found lots of little holes covered up. I did leave some because I plan on sinking something over these wheel wells. Uh, but yeah, it says uh, you can sand in 30 minutes, but I think we're gonna let it sit and just do its thing. But yeah, that's first time I've used it. Oh, use protective gloves. I did, I'm so happy I did. That stuff is nasty. Hey everybody, um, just got done sanding. Um, as you can see, I have on this and safety glasses because the particles are so fine. You do not want to inhale it and you don't want it in your eyes. So definitely use this when using the Bondo and sanding it. As you can tell, it is not a professional job. But you know what? The holes are covered, they're sealed. Uh, this is going to be covered up anyway with primer, paint, and the subfloor, so it does not have to be pretty at all. And then, as you can see, I took my leaf blower to get all the, the dust out, the sanding dust. So tomorrow, we can put on the primer. We are making progress! Yay! Happy Saturday morning! Well, the adventure van is coming along. Today, well, now we have the holes uh, prepped and sanded. This is what we will be using today. We're going to prime it. Woo! I can't wait to get this floor done. I'm just saying. And... The floor is primed. Don't worry, folks. It's just primer. That's all it is. It'll be white. I promise. But, oh, almost done with this. I'm so excited. Okay, so this is what I used as my paint after the primer. And look at this. How much nicer does this look? I know. Nobody's going to see this when I put the floor in. But I will know. It's not growing things underneath my floor that it's sealed. No more holes. No nothing getting in. No, I did not paint walls, things like that. No, not at all. Uh, because... All this is going to be covered up with wood. So no, I did not. I just wanted to protect the floor and what I am putting on top of it. I am so happy this is done. 
um, just so you know, one quart of primer of this and one quart of this was able to do the floor, some spots on the doors, um, and then, hold on, let's go up here. Uh, this here, um, I actually have the trim, which will go back on. But still, it had some rust, and I, I primed it. I did everything. So, I have peace of mind. And if any, if I sell this van, uh, whoever else buys it will see. I took the time to make sure it's protected. Oh, my goodness. So glad. Now we can actually start the floor.